Eurotunnel has again demanded the closure of a Red Cross centre near Calais after hundreds of asylum seekers forced their way into the Channel Tunnel. The tunnel was closed for more than 10 hours last night as French police used tear gas to round up the refugees. Police in Kent said no one reached the English side. The tunnel has now been reopened. Nearly 3,000 people have fled from their homes tonight as bushfires continue to spread out of control in southeastern Australia. A quarter of a million acres have ignited as high winds fan the flames, threatening to engulf towns close to the suburbs of Sydney itself. Thousands of firefighters are battling the blazes and ambulance crews have treated hundreds of people for the effects of smoke. One of Britain's most popular actors, Sir Nigel Hawthorne, has died. He was 72. He'll be best remembered, of course, for his performance as Sir Humphrey in the BBC television series Yes Minister. He'd been fighting cancer, but he died of a heart attack this morning. Nick Hyam has been looking back. Nigel Hawthorne had to wait till he was past 50 to taste success in a part that fitted him like a glove. The top civil servant Sir Humphrey in Yes Minister. I believe you know each other. Uh, yes, we did cross swords when the minister gave me a grilling over the estimates in the Public Accounts Committee. I wouldn't year. say that. Well, you came up with all the questions I hoped nobody would ask. Well, opposition's about asking awkward questions. And government is about not answering them. <laughs> well, you answer all mine anyway. I'm glad you thought so, minister. <laughs> they loved his portrayal in Margaret Thatcher's Downing Street. Sir Humphrey embodies uh, the sophistication, the uh, polish, the... Uh, a superb intellect, the smoothness, not to say sleekness, of the men who run these impeccable machines as they see it. After 30 years of bit parts, he was able to pick and choose his roles, as the writer C.S. Lewis on stage in Shadowlands, for instance, or as Alan Bennett's Mad King George, for which on screen he won an Oscar nomination. When felons were induced to talk, they were shown first the instruments of their torture. The king is shown the instrument of his to induce him not to talk. His career was at a pinnacle. He and his partner, Trevor Bentham, joined the fruits of success. Then the newspapers added him as gay in a way that ridiculed and humiliated him. He found it shaming. He felt very, very hurt for, and he could never just understand why. He said, what are they outing? I've been out forever. <laughs> and he remained one of our best loved, most versatile and most polished actors. <laughs> it's up to you, Bernard. What do you want? I want to have a clear conscience. A clear conscience? Yes. <laughs> when did you acquire this taste for luxuries? The actor Sir Nigel Hawthorne, who died this morning. Let's have some football news now. And Newcastle United remain top of the table after a day when all of the Premiership teams played. The match of the day, though, was Arsenal's win in their London derby against fellow title challengers Chelsea. They're for lovers of the game. Kickoff at Highbury was at noon, but this was a local derby which initially had a morning after feel. Carnu among those lacking the coordination to tear the wrapping off a belated Christmas present. It continued in fuzzy-headed vein until the half hour, when Lampard finally coordinated instinct with deed. 1-0 Chelsea. Struck on the half hour. The half-time tee, though, must have helped clear Arsenal heads, particularly that of Sol Campbell. His first goal for the Gunners since defecting from Tottenham was simply unstoppable. Predictably, ensuing events were hardly endowed with seasonal goodwill. Vieira's exchange with Hasselbank went unnoticed by the referee, but not by Graham Lesseau, whose retaliation moments later might easily have earned him more than a yellow card. More suitable punishment was meted out later when indecisive Chelsea defending left Sylvain Wiltord free to drive home the winner. Whether thanks to the failings of others or not, Arsenal's championship challenge is acquiring increasing authority. Kevin Geary, BBC News. England captain David Beckham started on the substitutes bench for the sixth game in a row, but still helped Manchester United to beat Everton today. It was Beckham's cross to Ryan Giggs which allowed United to open the scoring. Giggs then set up Ruud van Nistelrooy for United's second to seal their fourth successive win. And Liverpool are in third place now after beating Aston Villa, while Jonathan Woodgate returned for Leeds as they won at Bolton. Ipswich are off the bottom after victory over Leicester, while Newcastle remain three points clear at the top after their convincing win today over Middlesbrough. 
Now, in the Scottish Premier League, new Rangers manager Alex McLeish saw his side beat the team he's just left, Hibernian. Craig Moore scored first for Rangers with a header from a corner, and Tori Andre Flo then fired home a second as the Glasgow side went on to win 3 0. But they still remain 10 points behind Celtic in the table after they beat Livingston 3 2 with a last minute goal. Wins two for Hearts and St Johnston. That's it from us. More on BBC News 24 throughout the night. But from all of the team here, thanks for watching. Good night. Continuing to some more wintry weather to come in the next few days, especially the north of Scotland. Just look at this chart for Friday. Low pressure out here, loads of isobars, very windy indeed, gales or even severe gales, blizzard conditions, bitterly cold, temperatures well below freezing, so stay away from those Scottish hills. And it's not only going to be Friday, later on during tomorrow too, some more snow. And we have some snow there at the moment. This little area of low pressure is going to be slipping down into the North Sea. We're also seeing some rain and sleet further south into southern Scotland and parts of northern England. And that's falling where the temperatures recently were below freezing. So again, watch out. There are some icy stretches around at the moment. Those two, though, I think will go in the next few hours. The area of low pressure will take the sleet and snow a bit further south. We will find that although temperatures at the moment are below freezing across a good part of England and Wales, as this band of rain with little bits of sleet and snow heads on southwards, so the temperatures will rise. On the other hand, in Scotland, temperatures will dip again as skies clear later on. Then tomorrow, for much of the country, a good deal of cloud, little bits and pieces of rain and drizzle here and there, maybe some sleet in the southeast to begin with. Scotland starts off bright, but uh, cloud with rain, again readily turning to sleet and snow, spreads across from the west during the course of the day. Maybe a little bit of brightness in some sheltered southern areas. Milder in most parts, still quite cold in the north, but with the wind feeling on the chilly side. And then on Friday and Saturday, cold winds and wintry showers, especially in the north. Good night.